Hey what is up guys welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Gran Turismo 7. So I'm going to get started with my money grind week. This will run from this Tuesday until the following. Throughout this time we'll look at some individual builds. We'll also look at some roundup videos as well as some money glitches as well. This was requested by you guys. Next week we'll have our top 5 and top 10 week. So we're going to start off with one of the cars that seems to be causing a lot of people problems. From update 1.49 the BMW M3 from 1997. Now in terms of the build it is fully upgraded to 700pp and meant to resemble a super tourer of the era. So in terms of the car itself it is one that you can pick up from the used car dealership for 74,600 credits. Now in terms of the starting PP it's 494.72. In terms of the drivetrain it's an FR car, 316 brake horsepower and pretty weighty at 1460 kilograms. Now the good thing about this build though, without the engine swap you can fully upgrade it and run it pretty much maxed out at 700 PP. So let's head over first to the livery. If you want to copy the livery that I'm using in today's video for all of the aero parts, a big thank you to Tenki33 for this one. Now in terms of the livery itself, it looks absolutely fantastic. I haven't changed any of the visual parts as well as the aero parts. So grabbing this livery will give you everything. However, if you don't want to do that, we're running a non wide bodied version and a non engine swap version. Now the main reason for this is because the wide body does tend to catch the archers. Next up is going to be the wheels. Now I do run them a little bit bigger so this is going to be 19 inch, a wide width and a wide offset as well. Again you can pick any wheels you want. Now in terms of the aero parts at the front we're running the type B from bumper and then onto the sides again we're going to be running a altered side skirt. So it's going to be type A for this one so type B then type A and then onto the rear we're not actually going to run anything we're going to run the standard parts rear however of course the wing is changed to a type b for this one and that is pretty much all of the aero parts for this car apart from of course the roll cage now this does alter your pp rating um, i'm going to run the type c for this build so now let's move into the tuning sheet. Of course, this is the main meat of the build. We're going to be running this on racing soft. You are pretty much running it fully upgraded. You'll also want to have a set of intermediates and heavy wets. Fully customizable suspension. Body height at the front is 110 and 120 at the rear. Anti-roll bar is 7 at the front and 8 at the rear. Compression 35 for both. Expansion is going to be 45 for both. Natural frequency is 2.65 at the front and 2.85 at the rear. Now negative camber angle I run 2.5 at the front and 3 at the rear. Toe angle 0.05 outwards front and 0.10 inwards at the rear. Differential next is fully customizable of course. The torque is set to 20, the acceleration to 25 and the braking once again to 20. Moving on next we have the fully customizable racing transmission. Now I have this naturally set to 250 and here are the manual adjustments. The final is 3.291, sixth is 1.125 dash 317, fifth 1.320 dash 264, fourth is 1.620 dash 215, third is going to be 2.040 dash 171, second is going to be 2.695 dash 129 and first is 3.857 dash 90. Feel free to pause if you do need to. Next up is going to be the ballast and power. There is no changes here. So we have the fully customizable ECU. Downforce at the front is 18,150 at the rear. We need to keep it relatively low for the likes of Le Mans. Next up, we are not going to be turbocharging. It's not available on the non-engine swap variant. Air cleaner racing, silencer racing, manifold racing, brakes racing, pads racing, Brake controller, I do recommend you can tune this on the fly to your personal liking. Next up, we're going to move up to the clutch and flyer, which once again is racing, carbon propeller shaft, and then all of the permanent upgrades. The likes of bore up, engine balance, polished ports, camshafts, crankshafts, compression pistons, all of the weight reductions, and of course, to finish, increased body rigidity. Fully upgraded, 699.94 pp. Next up is going to be event and difficulty, so you want to have it on easy for this one. If you're running 700pp Le Mans, you'll know that after 6 laps you can pretty much stop and wait. At that point you just let the counter tick down and cross the line. In terms of the events, now this car will pretty much work everywhere, you'll just have to alter the downforce. 
The main ones for me though is Mount Panorama. This is basically a seven lap sprint race in the dry. Um, again, it does pay out less, but it is an overall fairly easy event and pays decent. However, the best is of course, 24 hour Le Mans, which is the typical grand event. Let's go ahead and quickly talk about the car then. So this car is built to a 700pp spec and it's meant to resemble the Super Tourers of the era. It's an insanely aggressive setup so it can be pushed to the absolute maximum even at fuel mix 6. It's also very very lightweight and very very responsive. Again this turned out to be one of the more difficult cars to tune from update 1.49 and I think that did turn a lot of people away. So hopefully this build just makes it overall better. Now another reason it's so aggressive is the fact that we are not really going to be aiming for fuel saving. You just stick it in fuel mix 6, go maximum revs, maximum attack on the racing softs. After 3 laps burn everything out, pit and rinse and repeat. It's a fairly great car for doing pretty much everything in one of the most aggressive manners possible. No such thing as fuel saving or anything like that needed. We're just going to be aiming for 3 laps, boxing, job done. It's a pretty decent build overall, so let's get into the strategy. So what you're going to want to do here is find where you want your brake bias, then stick it in fuel mix 6, and you're pretty much done and dusted at this point. It's all about just getting past the AI as quickly as possible. So in terms of the clean race bonus, you don't need to worry about hitting the AI or anything like that. The only thing you will need to keep an eye out for is the yellow flags. If you happen to get a penalty on the yellow flags, that is the only way you'll lose that clean race bonus. Now in terms of the car itself, even in Fuel Mix 6, it's capable of reaching the 180 to 185 mile per hour barrier. So it's fairly quick in a straight line. It's also very, very responsive and very aggressive through the corners. Again, at Le Mans, we're running lower downforce than we would at other tracks. That is because top speed is a lot more vital than the downforce. You only really need that for the final sector. Now in terms of the rest of this run, you will notice that the tires and fuel life will hang on pretty much for three laps at a maximum. And that is really all you need to do. Once you start heading into the second lap onwards, I fully recommend just keeping your eye on that weather radar. It can get extremely awkward and rain can come out of absolutely nowhere. The highest chance does seem to be on lap two to three, and then of course five and six. So just mainly watch it on those laps and you should be good and should be covered off from any rain. Again, in terms of the AI, they do seem to be a lot stronger in the wet conditions now, especially if they're running dry tires. So I'm assuming that is still a glitch. Now, in terms of the run that I had here, it was actually a fully dry run, even though it did manage to threaten a little bit with rain. It pretty much missed the entire, entire track. Now, of course, because we're just doing it three laps at a time and it's still going to be dry, all I need to do on this pit stop is put another set of racing softs on. Again, they'll be good for pretty much three laps. They can go longer, but again, the fuel tank of this car won't go that far, so we don't really need to worry about that too much. So I'm going to box in, take an entire fresh set of tyres, and then, of course, I'm going to fill the car to full. Now, at this point in time, I was definitely expecting some rain to come in, but it just never really happened. Again, it sort of passed over, kind of threatened to rain, and then just wouldn't. Now, honestly, the better runs in this game are actually when it does rain. Now the good thing about the rain is although the AI have definitely improved because of the whole you know dry tire and the wet sort of glitch um, it definitely does mean that they will still end up having a few rough moments here and there and it just allows you to take that bit extra lead than when it's fully dry. Basically in the dry you're going to have to fight for it a lot harder than you would in the wet especially if you want to do the stop and wait. Now the majority of the time if you do get that rear dry run Honestly, you don't really have to do the stop and wait. Around about seven laps should be good. As you can see, I pitted on the end of lap six. I had enough time left, so I just filled the car to four, went to fuel mix one for the entire time. As you can see, went insanely aggressive for this final lap. And even then, I still managed to uh, start lapping some of the cars um, come the end, so I didn't have to worry about them too much at all. Honestly, they're fairly inconsistent across the board, but have definitely improved. So maybe if you're not that confident in this game, honestly, just be aware that they're definitely starting to get a little bit quicker since update 1.49.
Now, in terms of my fastest lap, it was a 4 minute 8.780. Uh, that was set on lap two. But again, because of the pit stops, it's not always great enough to kind of, you know, gauge where the car's at. 825k on the payout, 58.5 miles done, and of course my daily marathon reward as well. So there we go, this build is going to kick off our money grind week. Now tomorrow I'm actually going to be returning to one of the money glitches. It probably is currently the best method in the game. Um, again, I'm just trying to get it all working for the new update and the new physics. So that one should be finished off for tomorrow, which is going to be on the Wednesday. So be sure to tune in for that one. Anyway, let me know what you think of this Super Tour build thanks so much for watching take care guys peace